And it's going to be running until September 2nd at the Canadian Museum of Nature. It's Michael Benson's Other Worlds, Visions of Our Solar System. And guess who's joining us right now? Michael Benson, artist. Good to have you here, Michael. Well, thanks for inviting me. But can I mention this as well? So you're a fellow at the New York Institute of Humanities. What does that mean exactly? Well, it's an it's kind of a talking shop. It's um, you know a bunch of very I, I would say you know I don't know how they accepted me, but a bunch of very interesting uh, public intellectuals and people like that from various fields yeah. who get together occasionally and. Yeah. Talk. Well, throughout the course of this interview, we're going to find out how they selected you because you're a pretty intelligent guy. Oh, well, you know I don't know stuff. about that, but uh, you this, should meet my wife. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a North American premiere. Yes. Happening at uh, the Canadian Museum of Nature. So basically, it's five decades of space exploration and then some. Uh, they've given us great history. Uh, a great history lesson in photography and you're taking these photos and you're exhibiting them. Yeah, I'm basically making the case that the visual legacy of over five decades of interplanetary exploration uh, constitutes a significant chapter in the history of photography mm -hmm. as much as it does in science. I mean obviously the missions were sent out uh, for scientific research purposes but you know the net result among other data banks or <laughs> databases is yeah. many 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 uh, raw images okay. and so I've gone through gone into the archives looking for extraordinary vistas and views and angles and I take the raw data and I manipulate it in Photoshop mm -hmm. okay. um, by and I try to get color color images out of it and, and wide field views so when did this project begin for you it's it's it, we're going back to the 1990s correct uh, well late in the late 90s I became aware that it was possible to use the internet to to see images that before that time, before the internet, you know, only a handful of specialists, scientists, planetary scientists and engineers could really access the data coming down from interplanetary missions. But as soon as the internet came along, NASA was a very early adopter of, of a very democratic uh, institution, getting the data out there to anybody who wanted to see it. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I first became aware that it was possible to look at the material. Okay. How many stunning photos are there, images? Uh, in this exhibit? Uh, it's over 40 okay. in this, this iteration of the show. Okay. Yeah. You want to explain to us uh, some of the uh, photos? I mean, here's one. Um, I, I couldn't even guess. I don't know my solar system that well. What exactly oh, come are you on. You at? do. You do. Is that, well, you not, know one part of it. It's not the moon, is it? Yes. Okay. That is the moon. And in fact, I'm glad you showed that first because that's from 1967. Wow. Uh, and that's one of the earliest images in the show. Uh, and that came from um, a series of spacecraft called the Lunar Orbiters, which took 70 millimeter film into orbit of the moon and processed it on board. This is way before digital image techniques or technologies. Mm -hmm. um, and scanned the film and, and wired the images back. My gosh, okay, so what, which planet are we looking at here? That is not a planet, that is the sun. It's and the sun. Um, you can see the day side and the night side. Um, I'm sort of joking. Uh, it, <laughs> okay. It's the sun being uh, eclipsed by the Earth, and the reason it's a graduated edge between the, you know, what you see and, and darkness there is, is the atmosphere filters ultraviolet radiation gradually. The mm -hmm. thicker the atmosphere, the less UV comes through. Okay, and here? This is, uh, that's the most volcanic object in the solar system. It's, uh, it's a moon of Jupiter called Io. It's got at least 400 active volcanoes operating at any given time, and that's just what we know with you know, flyby missions. It's basically constantly fuming and exploding with, with wow. uh, volcanic eruptions. Okay. And that, by the way, is Io at the limb of Jupiter. Hmm. Um, that image took multiple, image, multiple raw frames to, to mosaic together. Okay. And oh, here, Saturn. Correct? Yes. I got that one right. Good. Yeah, that's the dark side of the rings and the dark side of the planet. Not one thing you see there is directly lit by the sun. Everything is indirect. All the light there is indirect. So you've got light filtering through the rings and then lighting the dark side of the night side of Saturn mm -hmm. indirectly. Okay, so, so can you tell me how you manip manipulated these uh, images to, to, to make them look the, the way, I mean, look at this. This is, I mean, this is true artwork for this sure. This is one of my favorites of all. Uh, this one is a simple mosaic of multiple frames from the Voyager missions. Uh, one, of the Voy one of the two Voyagers that flew past Jupiter. Um, and with this image, you know, there was a lot of image uh, cleaning up of the raw frames and then mosaicing together. When it comes to color, it gets a little more complicated. If you're lucky, the spacecraft will have taken three shots of a given part of a planet through red, green, and blue filters. Because mm -hmm. they arrive as black and white frames, usually. Uh, and then you can stack them in Photoshop and get an RGB composite and then mosaic out from there if you're lucky. But it all depends on what the... Uh, 
the people running the missions, you know, the scientists and engineers running the missions have decided the filter set should be in the, in the program of observation. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I mean, this is going to be fascinating for anybody who loves anything to do with space, but your, your uh, mission here is to, to produce amazing artwork okay, and to show amazing artwork. Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm making the case that this belongs to the, in the canon of photography and not just photography, but the graphic image. You know, in the longer history. Okay, and you also have five image. books that, uh, that uh, you've published yes. as well? Yes, indeed. My gosh, yeah. you just seem like you have a lot of stuff going on. Well, uh, you know, otherwise I would probably go out of my mind, and, you know, <laughs> given what the winter was like this last year. <laughs> Not doubt about it. Okay, so the ex exhibition is called Michael Benson's Other Worlds Visions of Our Solar System, and it's happening until September 2nd at the Canadian Museum of Nature. Thank you very much for bringing your amazing artwork to our city. Dylan, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it's it. It's wonderful stuff. Michael Benson right there. More daytime coming up in moments right here on Rogers TV. Thanks for being here as always. We appreciate it.